I suppose a few people are wanting to know my thoughts with regards to the new Power Rangers movie coming up. It's really difficult to say at this stage. Uh, from one aspect, you can say that they're trying to not try and do exactly move for move what the TV series did, but there's a lot of elements of the TV series that they're staying true to, you know, they're staying to the five core members with Jason, Zach, Trini, Billy and Kimberly. I like that this time they're not repeating the same mistakes with regards to what um, Power Ranger um, suit designation they had for with Zack and Trini originally because Zack who was played by Walter Jones was the Black Ranger and the late Thuy Trent. Thuy Trang, hope I said that right, was designated as the Yellow Ranger. That shouldn't have flown even in the early 90s. Uh, you look at that today and you think, that's wrong. That's just so wrong. So I'm glad that they did the switch this time around where um, the Black Ranger is played by, I think it's a Canadian Asian actor. And Trini is played by Becky G, who's a rapper, songwriter. I'm actually just going to look up real quick um, who Zach is being played by Power Rangers film. He is being played by uh, Luddy... Or Ludi Lin, I'm hoping I pronounced that uh, correctly. And, you know, Billy is being played by R.G. Seiler. So he's going to be the first uh, black actor to play. Actually, no, 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 no. Excuse me. He's the, I think he's the second black actor to play the Blue Ranger. Because, best to my knowledge, um... In Power Rangers in Space, that uh, the actor for that who played uh, TJ was the first one to do that. And he was also the first uh, black actor to play the Red Ranger. And, you know, I thought he was a very good Red Ranger. Very no-nonsense, get-on-with-it kind of guy. I like, you know, I like characters like that. Um, I'm going to get into some of the specifics. I'm a little, I was a little bit thrown off that they're going to make um, Jason and Kimberly a potential love interest, which I thought, okay, okay, that's different. Uh, I know little to nothing about um, Dakar or Dakri, I don't know how you pronounce his first name, so do correct me in the comment section below if I've done if I pronounced it wrong, which chances are I have. Um, Naomi Scott as Kimberly. I thought I was looking at a younger version of Amy Jo Johnson because the resemblance is uncanny, to say the least. The only thing we've seen in the trailers is. Jason looks as though he's he looks as though he's paying penance for something that he did wrong. Kimberly is to be fair, Kimberly was a valley girl in the original, so her being placed with, you know, the socialites that only care about social upstanding in this modern day in this modern day and age, that pretty much translates well. Not really is a lot a lot is known about Trini in this variation. Only that she seems to be a lot more vocal than the original version. Billy is still the socially awkward nerd. So, you know, what was, you know, translated well in the early 90s, that's pretty much um still a thing in this modern day and age. Zach, we've haven't even heard him utter a word. The the suits, 
it's an improvement over the TV suits because um, what people need to remember is uh, when Saban originally adapted this after seeing uh, Super Sentai Zeal Ranger, he had to pretty much keep the same consistency with what the actors wore in Japan. And yeah, by today's standards, it looks incredibly campy, but that was the sign of the times. Whereas now, people actually pay a lot more attention to the to the actual look and the authenticity of you know what you're trying to project uh, with the series that you're making. And you know, we've all heard the jokes, you know. This was a creation of Stark Industries, but just look at it for what it is. I mean, they basically are. Um, yeah, and this depends on your perspective. They are basically either a ripoff of the Iron Man suit from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, or they're inspired. But either way, this is a huge step up over the original suits. I mean, in all honesty, it wouldn't have been such a bad thing if they had just taken the suits that they'd had in the original 1995 movie. I can't believe it's been 22 years since that. And, you know, that movie is a product of its time as well. But in terms of the upgrades that it got from the TV series, that you know, I'll take those suits any day. Although, from what I understand with regards to the cast, apparently those suits weighed up to about something close to 30 pounds. Which, you know, that's a that's a lot of heavy, um, you know, costumes to wear. But the the flip side to that is, you know, you they had to make these suits look as though they actually had power to them and not something you just, you know, pull a zipper down and you just take them off. So from that an angle alone, at least, you know, that, you know, they're actually making it look plausible. The Morphers look a lot more alien, which I think, yeah, okay, yeah, you know, um, I can get behind that, and also they're not being, they're not deviating away too much from what we remember. Now, it's been emerged more, you know, with more details. Now, when they had, it was revealed Brian Cranston as Zordon, First of all, great casting, because this guy's a great actor and a great voice actor, and he actually voiced some of the monsters back in the back in the day on Power Rangers. So this is coming full circle for him. And I don't know exactly a, uh, what look we're gonna get. I know there was a uh, like a VIP VR. Uh, invitation for people at a um, I think it was at a Samsung convention and you could actually see what Zordon looks like in this VR experience surprised um, Saban hasn't brought back VR troopers because you know that was uh, that was an okay show wasn't Power Rangers in terms of popularity but then again what was and it'll be interesting to see what particular um direction they're going to go with Zord on this time. He's still going to be the mentor, but now it's emerged that he's the original Red Ranger, which is different because as we know from the uh, precedent that was set with the original series, he was a wizard that he did not create the original um, six power coins. That was Ninjor sealed in I think it was in the Desert of Despair from the context of what they went with for Season 3 with the Ninja Quest. And Rita Repulsa, who's play being played by Elizabeth Banks, who you may know as Peggy Brandt from the original Spider-Man trilogy, is playing Rita Repulsa. And Rita is a 65 million year old former Green Ranger gone rogue. And given the look that her costume has that, I mean, it pay, makes sense with what they're going with. But her as the Green Ranger, again, it's so different from what we're, 
what we've been accustomed to in the past because she stole the green power coin to get a green ranger of her own. So for her to be technically in the context of uh, the origins of Power Rangers, for her to be the first female Green Ranger, that's actually co that's actually quite interesting. I don't know if Dragon Zord is going to feature in this movie. We know the Zords are going to feature in this, and as for the Mega Zord. Um, It's not bad, but I will say this, and this is probably just a tad bit of nostalgia talking, and I accept that, but in all honesty, I think a more modernized look of the original Megazord would have been more plausible, because I look at um, the Megazord that they're going with for this movie, and I'm like, really? That's it? Again, you know... Other people will probably be more inclined to accept this. I'm looking at it and I'm like, nah, -uh. just it, 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 nah, -uh. no. So, yeah. And then we get to um, the situation with Goldar, where he is scattered all across the earth in golden dust, which I thought, oh. Okay, um, that kind of makes sense, you know, in you know, relation to his name, Goldar. But then Rita has to go rob a bank in downtown Moscow, and I'm like, what? It's like, why is Rita robbing? It's like, you know what? Ugh, I don't know. And the general tone of the movie, and again, I appreciate they can't make it campy. Um, you know, to try and fit in with, um, you know, with the transition that the world has gone through. But it feels as though it's trying to be dark and gritty just because Batman did it. And, you know, this is the thing I've got to, i got to make this very clear. The dark and edginess that worked for at least one of the uh, Dark Knight uh, movies from Christopher Nolan, Batman Begins... You could do a dark and realistic Batman movie. It can be done. And, you know, with the direction that he went with, it works for Batman. But the problem is so many studios have copied this template that it's not special anymore. It's become cliche and not in a good way. You know, I'm all for... You know, trying new stand, new stamps, and new spin, and then a new spin on things. But I would have preferred if the Power Range, this Power Rangers movie, would go with a direction whereby there are stakes. Uh, you know, in this movie, but not edgy and dark and every emo stereotype out there, just for the sake of. I would rather, I'd rather they take an influence from the the first Avengers movie, whereby, again, there are stakes to it, but they know where to put humor in. And that's the thing that, you know, I echo from the 2015 end of year panel, um... And we you know where Nick Nugent was uh, one of the uh, guest panelists. Um, you know, a lot of these movies now, where it's this very, you know, where, where they go into, you know, these films that are based on realism, it's very hospital sterile, um, depressingness. Whereas the Marvel movies, you have fun with it. You know, this is a good movie. I'm, I'm just gonna just have fun with it and. I think that's what a lot of movie studios need to actually take with that mindset today. It's like, you know, we've done the whole gritty, hard-hitting reality realism. People are kind of sick of it, you know? Uh, we know that the, the putties are going to be in this, and from... Excuse me. It's from some leaked photos that have shown up online where 
the Red Ranger is actually f taking on a few in parts of Angel Grove. Um, it's basically guys wearing, uh, for lack of a better description, green screen suits whereby you know the, the actors in questions are just wearing these suits that can then later have the the texture and the skin of the putty placed onto them so that aspect i like that you know the rangers are not going to be reacting to nothing they are actually going to be interacting and that makes and that's actually a lot better because at least then they can react accordingly to what's going on in the environment with regards to filming. Um, and they're not having to react to nothing. But we know they had to one time in the season two episode with the saxophone monster, I think. And that's the one where, you know, the... They're sort of clouded with this dust, and I think they're seeing old enemies, but really they're... There's an expression I, I like to use from time to time. They're just having a funny five minutes. We'll leave it at that. But yeah, what do you think about the development, the development of the Power Rangers movie coming out? I'm... Cautiously optimistic. I want to give it a chance, but I don't know. Hashtag Power Rangers. Until then, good night from the night.